G'day, it's James here. Welcome back to the channel. I've just got a quick video on some new bits and pieces that have arrived in the mail and some projects I'm working on. And in the second half of this video, you'll see a little uh, non-isolated switch mode power supply that will step down from mains voltage AC down to 12 volts DC. So that um, is a pretty interesting little project I've been working on. But first of all, I've got one of these that's finally arrived in the mail. It's a converter. It converts from DALI lighting systems to MQTT. And I'm being pretty um, waiting to try it out and see how well it works. So we've got the converter just here. And I have already had a quick look at it, but I haven't plugged it in and tried it yet. Basically, this takes in the DALI bus just down the bottom here. Now, the DALI bus is a non... Um, uh, no polarity. It doesn't matter which way around it goes. Um, Two-wire bus and it runs on a roughly 17 volts DC and it's not isolated from the mains voltage so it can actually run along with the mains voltage and generally it runs in either a star configuration or a um, series like in a row in a parallel configuration it doesn't you can do either to all the light fittings on a, in a level in, in a building and each light can be individually controlled by addresses up to 64 per network so this little device is a master and it also contains a power supply that runs the um, controls for the Delhi devices. So it'd be pretty cool. I'm just going to give this a try and see if we can connect a Delhi network to Home Assistant. And I've got a new little power supply um, that's arrived. It's a Texas Instru Instruments Buck step down converter. And it's got a fixed output of 3.3 volts and 500 milliamps and I've given it a go tried it out they're a very very small little module tiny two millimeters by two millimeters and I've actually just used it on my redesigned relay board that goes with home ESP so I've replaced the linear a linear voltage regulator just with that Texas Instruments buck converter so it's just got the three little components two capacitors one inductor and it's got a really small foot space uh, I thought I grabbed them just to try out for projects. Um, it's pretty handy if you can just have a little circuit to run the ESP module off 12 volts or 5 volts. And I've got some ambient light sensors. Two different types just to try out. I've been playing with one of them just here. And the idea is I wanted to make a little device with my 3D printer so that we can put a, a a sensor over the utility meter, power meter, and read the pulses with a, an ESP module, and then feed it into Home Assistant and use it to measure how much power usage I'm using in my house um, using the utility meter. I thought it might be a cheap and easy way to do it, and um, so I got them to try it out. I just had trouble using a light dependent resistor. It didn't work too well because my, the design of my meter allows light to leak in the side, so that's why I got these to try these out. I've got a whole stack of um, IGBTs to try out, some different types. And uh, that's to go along with, I've got 30 more FL5150 modules, which are for my um, cut phase dimmer that I've been working on. You'll see another video just in the description down below if you haven't seen that video yet. And I, the latest design unfortunately hasn't worked. Uh, it works, the power supply section works. And the dimmer works on its own, but together they, they're not working. There's a design fault that I've made. But separately, they work great, but I just have to get them to work together. And last of all, I've got a um, LNK306 switching power supply. And this is another uh, little IC to switch from mains voltage down to... 5 volts or 12 volts DC or something, whatever voltage you want. So that's a um, for another project I've made. So it can run, I've got it connected to 8 relays. So it puts out a little bit more power than the, than the switch mode power supply we're about to look at. But it's got all the same design, it's just a little bit bigger. And I've also got these. Some relays, the tiny ones. Smaller than the Omron ones I was using before. So they are... 17 mil by 10 mil 
by 12. They're very small little relays. They're 240 volt rated, 10 amps, and they these ones are 5 volt coils. And I've got some 12 volt coils too. And I've actually got these on here. And this is a redesign of um, my three relay module that works with home ESP. And that is uh, obviously the smaller relays are in here and um, more affordable, cheaper to buy. Some people made a comment that the Omron ones are a bit expensive, which they are, they, they cost more. So I got these ones and I also added the terminals on here as well, which I've used this and it's great. It's like heaps better than the other one and it works really well. And of course it's got the GPIOs that come out here. You can have up to five. You can use them as switches or sensors or however you like. And an ESP module just goes in there and I haven't fitted that yet. And a nice little printed 3D case for it to sit in. So you can access your wires and the screws and it just goes like so. So if you want to see some more about the first version of this, because it's quite similar, um, there's another video in the description you can check out. All right, now we'll just jump across and we'll check out the um, one and a half watt, two watt switch mode non-isolated power supply. So we've got our mains coming in just here, the active and neutral. And that's all protected by this four amp fuse just here. And it's also got MOV protection, which goes um, in parallel across the IGBTs of the dimmer part of the circuit. And over here, we've just got a, um, a fusible resistor that protects the power supply um, coming into this um, the rectifier. Um, it converts the AC into DC. And it's got the smoothing capacitors, the two smoothing capacitors just there on the top. Um, and that smooths out the rectified DC and also a inductor as well, which is part of the LC circuit. Then we've got the LNK304 um, switching IC and that um, takes the um, voltage in and switches it and drops it down to 12 volts DC. That's the output inductor and that's the output capacitor and that's the low ESR um, capacitor to reduce the out the the voltage ripple so that's the um, that's the whole um, stage really and on the bottom we've got some of the feedback resistors um, for regulating the voltage output and then after that section there we've got the um, second stage which as you can see is very small that's the um, Texas Instruments um, buck step down converter and that's just the IC just there and I'm pretty surprised that I managed to solder that on in my, in my little oven. Um, but it did work okay, it worked fine. And you can see it's just got the one inductor and it's got the two capacitors for the input and output from that device. Um, I've got a, a load set up here um, so we can put a 2 watt load on it just to try out um, the power supply to see how it works. Um, I'm pretty sure that the dimmer part here is not going to work. I did design it um, and then after I did it, designed it, I, I worked out that it wasn't going to work. Um, but I thought I might as well give it a go and try anyway, um, just for the experience, just so I know for certain. And this is what I was using previously in projects. So that's just a little um, step down. It will take 24 volts maximum, I believe, and it'll step down to 3.3 um, volts. So I was using that and as you can see that one, um, is a little bit larger, although it does have a larger current current capacity. So we've got our power supply plugged in and set up, and this is the part where you need to be very careful and um, stay away from the mains voltage. It is, of course, um, has RCD protection, but we still don't want to, we don't want to rely on that. Got 240 volt coming in there. And on the output side, we've got 3.24 volts. I believe that's just because my multimeter is not very good. I need a new one. I used to have a Fluke one, and very sadly, I lost it. I used to have a Fluke clamp meter too, and I very sadly lost that. But we've got our DC clamp meter just here. As you can see, we've got 0.34 milliamps, 
and it's working very well. I put my thermal imaging camera onto that after letting it run for about 15 minutes and, and none of the circuit heated up at all. And we can see just here, if I'm careful, we can get 12 volts. Eleven, eleven point eight volts, and that voltage holds quite constant even as the load changes and goes up and down. So once again, I think it's just my multimeter, not very accurate. But it is a very stable output that we're getting with on from different outputs. Um, note that when I changed the load a bit just then, I had the device unplugged; it wasn't plugged in. As with a non-isolated power supply, um, any part of the circuit can really be at mains potential. So you have to um, have it away or you can't come in contact with it at all, any part of it. Even though we're measuring 3 volts there, uh, it's very likely that between earth, which is where I'm standing, and um, the ground it will have some mains potential that could cause harm. Um, so yeah, that's the um, little power supply there. Um, we're now just going to jump over and have a look at the Gerber files. So I've never never really made a switch mode power supply or any power supply. And I just did it out of curiosity just to sort of learn how it works. And I came across this designer here and I'm sure there's other designers and different ways of making switch mode power supplies. But I found this pretty easy to use. It was a power integrations one. And uh, we're just using the... Uh, switch link uh, TN2 switch link TN in a buck configuration and this little um, designer just helps you to work out the components that you need to use in your design so I believe I had a um, output of 12 volts and a current of 80 milliamps at 12 volts we've got universal voltage and it gives you all the components that you need to make the um, the switch mode power supply. So we've got the full wave rectification. Uh, we have the input stage resistance, which the data sheet tells you 8.2. You can use 8.2 or 10. That's to stop inrush current and the ambient temperature, 70 degrees, and that's pretty much most of the configuration you need to do and it tells you what size you need so an LNK 304 which is what I used um, it tells you what size input capacitors to use 2.2 microfarad and it tells you um, the diodes that you need the suggested diodes to use and it tells you down here the output inductor to use so it says to use the off-the-shelf 680 um, microhenry inductor and it has to have a current rating of 0.11 or 110 milliamps. And down here it also recommends a soft start capacitor from 1 to 10 microfarads. So I used a 2.2 in mine and that is because the, um, if you have greater than 12 volts or you have more than 100 uh, microfarad capacitance in the circuit so I use the soft start capacitor capacitor and if we come across to the the, the, the layout here uh, that's the circuit part for the switch mode power supply and you'll see the full wave full wave rectification just here the input capacitors one two and the input inductor now the input inductor size comes from the data sheet and it simply it doesn't seem to matter what size in particular you use but it says a user between these sizes it's not as critical as the output inductor uh, that's the soft start capacitor up here these are the feedback resistors to make the voltage correct and if we go back and have a look at the designer it actually does tell you the feedback capacitors to use are 2k and 11.86k to give you 12 volts if you want a different voltage you can change this here and then you've got the freewheeling diode which is glass passivated um, 
because of the frequency that the switching is done at. The others can be just ordinary power diodes. And then we've got the output inductor just here, which was specified in the designer. And this capacitor here, which they specified low ESR to make the ripple voltage smaller. So that's the circuit, it's pretty straightforward. It's the first one ever made. And that's just the layout just here, which is rough, loosely based on what the data sh sheet suggested. Um, this layout just here. And then this section here is the Texas Instruments step buck step down converter. And I've actually made a small little sample board um, just so you can convert 17 down to 3.3 volts. And that's, that is actually based on the data sheet. This resistor here, I wasn't sure if you need it, but you don't need it because I didn't include it and it works. Um, it's simply, so if you want an output from the converter, and it tells you if it's on or if it's off. And seeing that I had the enable pin permanently connected to the input voltage, that means it's always going to be running. So that's always going to say it's on. So you don't actually need to have this resistor here unless you want that functionality. So that's the um, switch mode power supply. So I'd like to thank you for watching. I hope you found it interesting and you got um, learned something from this. I learned something while I was working on this project. And thanks a lot for watching. If you want to see more videos around home automation and installation of electrical and um, automation products, um, stuff like this, um, please give us um, subscribe for more. And I'm sure I appreciate all the support that you give. Thanks a lot. Bye.